A young woman decided to go skinny dipping in a lake in an isolated place, when she suddenly notices a strange man on the shore who is following her. The phone rings. The call goes straight to voicemail asking to leave the message for Amber. A woman's voice tearfully asks her daughter to return home. At the same time, a happy young couple steals a car and gets on the road. The next morning, the girl wakes up in a car in the middle of the forest. She discovers that her boyfriend, Jake, is missing. Amber calms down when she sees him relieve himself not so far away. The phone vibrates. A call from home. The girl decides to ignore it. The boy returns. Amber wonders if they're in Florida yet. Jake says not yet. Besides, he doesn't even know how to get there. The girl opens the glove compartment hoping to find a map, but instead sees a revolver. The boy wants to teach her how to use a gun. A shot is heard. Jake is satisfied with Amber's first attempt, but asks his beloved to shoot with her eyes open next time. Amber wonders if she looks good with a weapon. The guy says ironically that he wouldn't mess with her. The girl points a revolver at him. Jake asks her to not joke around like that, but she orders him to get on his knees. The guy smiles nervously but decides to play along. Amber asks him to close his eyes and count to ten. Jake is fine with this role play and begins the countdown. The girl asks him to count slower. He listens. After a few seconds, Jake opens his eyes and sees Amber running away from him, laughing. A guy runs after his lover. The girl runs to the shore of a small lake. She takes all her clothes off and runs into the water. After swimming for a while, Amber is surprised that Jake still hasn't found her. Instead, she sees a stranger on the shore. He greets her and asks her how she finds the water. Somewhat worried, the girl says that the water is wonderful. The stranger notices that she is nervous and asks the girl if he is scaring her by any chance. She tries to stay calm and says that everything is fine. Amber decides to swim along the shore. The mysterious man slowly walks in her direction. Alarmed, the girl looks around and asks if he is following her by any chance. The man says he's just enjoying the view. Amber tries to ease the tension and jokingly calls him a bad boy. The stranger wonders if it is her car that is parked nearby. The girl smiles nervously and asks if he happened to see a boy here. The man asks her to swim closer, because he can't hear her. He asks for her name. Amber's cheerful mood is almost gone. She says her name while glancing at her clothes and gun. The stranger asks her why she is not at school now. The girl says she doesn't go to school. The man wonders if he might offend her boyfriend by looking at her. He then warns her that this place is very dangerous, since a couple of people drown here every year, and usually because they swim on their own. Amber does not want to show him that she's scared and says with a smile that she'll be okay, and swims away from the stranger. Staring intently, the man gives her a compliment, he likes the girl's hair. The tension is rising, Amber thanks him. It seems to the stranger that the girl is getting tired. He asks her if she wants to get to the shore. Amber decides to wait for her boyfriend. The man promises that he will not look at her, so she can get out of water in peace. Although the girl is shaking from the cold, she refuses. After a pause, the suspicious stranger says that he doesn't think that the boy will come. Extremely alarmed, Amber changes her plan. She tells the man that if he doesn't get out of here, her boyfriend will kick his ass. The indifferent man doubts this and shocks Amber by saying that her boyfriend is already dead. The frightened girl refuses to believe it and loudly calls out to her lover. The cold-blooded stranger suggests her to get out of the water, because no one will hear there her for sure. Confused, the girl swims away from the shore. Amber notices that the man is gone. Tired and cold, she decides to get to the shore after all. Trembling, the girl picks up her clothes, but does not find the gun there. Amber quickly gets dressed and leaves the lake. 
She runs through the forest shouting her boyfriend's name. There is no answer. The girl finds the car, starts it and, with tears in her eyes, drives away at maximum speed. She calls Jake. While, from the back seat, a hand slowly reaches towards Amber's head, 